I'm from Toronto, but, um, okay, nice. All right, a few boos, I expected that, thank you. But uh, I live in America now, and, uh, okay, no booze there. You guys are unpredictable, but um, <laughs> it's nice. I love living there, I won't lie. I really like it. There's some differences, that's for sure. Like uh, Amber Alerts, when a child goes missing, they send that right to your phone. I never experienced that in Canada. So the first one I got in the States scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I thought they were contacting me directly. I was like, I don't know nothing, man. <laughs> I got real defensive. I feel like I belong there, though. Took me a while, I asked a friend of mine, how will I know when I belong? And he said, you'll know when you have your first American thought. And I didn't know what that meant until I had my first American thought, and I knew right away, I knew I belonged. I was playing basketball, the guy I was guarding, he went to shoot. So I jumped up to block him, but he was only faking. So he went down, I went up, completely flipped over him, like ass over tea kettle. I was about to smash my head off the pavement, and my first thought was, oh no, I don't have health insurance. <laughs> I'm home. That's when I knew. It's a very interesting thing to move to a new place and have to shop for health insurance, to have to make that decision. How much is my life worth to me on a monthly basis? <laughs> I got a quote for $400, 400 a month. I was like, I've had a good run. <laughs> I'll be careful. Every time I leave the house now, I'm just like, everybody, let's get to where we're going here. Let's take it easy. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's very easy to die out there, you know? I think about dying all the time. I don't know why I'm smiling right now, but uh, <laughs> I had to fly in to get here. Every airplane I get on, man, I think about it, I'm like, this is the one. <laughs> Every plane, I'm like, this is the one. I'm, I'm surprisingly zen about it. I can chill out, you know, I can fall asleep. It's fine, but like that first little bump of turbulence, I can laugh off. You know, the first one that comes out of nowhere, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, well, that was pretty fun. The second one, I'm like, this is the one! I'm like, okay, calm down, dude. Stop yelling out, this is the one. You're freaking my kids out over here. I'm like, okay, I'll stop, but your kids need to know this is the one. We're going down. It doesn't look good. I don't understand why they don't give me a parachute. Blows my mind. Everybody on board, they should be like, welcome aboard, and of course, here's your parachute. <laughs> Things go wrong, you're gonna want this. No parachute. My friend tried to put my mind at ease. He was like, well, you know, there's no parachute, but they have other safety features. Like, you know, your seat cushion. <laughs> yeah, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> that really puts my mind at ease. It's really nice to know that in the off chance that this domestic flight crashes into the ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nice to know that my corpse will have something to float on. That's nice. I get scared before I even get on the airplane. That's how neurotic I am. I was flying recently, had a flight at 1.05 p.m. I went up to the ticket counter. The ticket agent, she said to me, you're on the 1.05 flight, but we actually have one seat available on the 12.05 flight, one hour earlier. Would you like that one instead? And I was like, of course, thank you so much. And then the second I switched, I was like, shit. <laughs> this is how it happens. Whenever a plane goes down, you always hear about it in the news the next day. There's always that one poor soul that they mention. He was actually supposed to be on the 105 flight. <laughs> he switched at the last second, and now he's super dead. 
And I was like, no, stop thinking so negative. The flight you switched to is not gonna crash. The flight you were supposed to be on is the one that's gonna crash. <laughs> Those people are all gonna die. Think positive. <laughs> I just don't wanna die in an embarrassing way, man. That's my main thing. I know I gotta die, but dear Lord, don't let me go out in a humiliating way, like choking to death. That's my biggest fear, man. Choking to death? My God, people would have to explain that. How did he die? Oh, him? Uh, you know that thing you've done a million times in your life? Chewing and swallowing? Yeah. <laughs> he just couldn't get the hang of it that one time. <laughs> Paid the ultimate price. What a loser. My God, I almost choked to death a few weeks ago, and I was home alone. When you start choking and you're home alone, my God, there's nothing scarier. And it was so scary because I wasn't even eating. I was drinking a glass of ice water. Ice cube got lodged in my throat. I was like, no way, not like this. <laughs> melt, melt. <laughs> I knew if I could last like 20 more seconds, this instrument of death would turn into the very substance I require to live. <laughs> the whole time I was choking, I was like, if I actually die right now, whoever finds my body is gonna have no idea what happened to me. <laughs> Thank you. You imagine they show up, they just see my stupid dead body, they're like, I don't know, I mean... He was hydrated, that's for sure, I don't know. <laughs> natural causes, I guess. Whenever you're looking at an obituary and you see the person died of natural causes, that person choked on an ice cube. That's what happened. <laughs> Montreal, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.